All right, gang. Here we are. Welcome back to the soapbox with Austin Maliolo. Um, been really fired up with the responses, the comments, the support so far for this uh, podcast. So I thank you. I appreciate that, and um, that really does it does mean a lot to me. So I'm keep it coming, and hopefully you guys like it. Um, so basically. The soapbox is any topic you want to get on, and 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 I want to. I, w- I was walking around my house today, and I wanted to hop on a a little a little one here on. I think a question a question I get a lot at seminars, a question that it's in the community, and quite frankly, it's one of those where like I'm not I'm I'm a little tired of answering it because I just feel like. I know this comes across as mean or rude, but I just feel like I'm exhausted for the lack of understanding of why this is still such a big topic. And the topic is strength and Metcon in an affiliate. Programming, um, it comes up a lot in programming. Quite honestly, I, it comes up with not a lot with owners or programmers. It comes up with people that are coaching at a gym that I have to implement this type of programming. And what happens is I talk to them and after we go through some educational stuff, they realize, man, like overall, the strength and Metcon thing, and which we'll get to in a second, is not optimal in the affiliate setting at all. And we'll talk about why, but then they are really struggling with how do they handle it with their, with their gym owner, with their programmer, um, based off the product they're trying to deliver on the floor. So that's really what I end up having a conversation with, which is a nice one because it's not necessarily having to talk about why it might not be ideal for the affiliate. Um, it's more or less how do you handle that really difficult uh, conversation with your affiliate owner, your programmer, and that's another topic. We're not going to dive into that, but you know, I do enjoy that conversation with people because it really does touch on a lot of difficult employee owner, employee manager scenarios, which are really difficult in any line of work. Um, but with that said, um, I here's the deal, okay? Why are you doing it? Why, as an as a gym owner, as an affiliate owner, as a programmer, right? Why are you programming Strength and Metcon? You need to ask yourself that. If you can give me an answer that doesn't re- re- resound around one it's what the members want or it's it, it my people want to get stronger or they need to get stronger then i might listen but the mo- that that's that those are the answers that i usually always get and one remember no one no members ever walk in the gym and i want strength and metcon but what is crossfit again um i want i you know i want to do you know i want to lift and then do a workout and then do some accessory work no, they don't know anything. So they've learned everything from you. Everything is your fault as a coach, number one. So remember that. And then as we progress through, you know, I think that it's important to understand this. People walk in the gym and their goal is one thing, fitness. They want to get fitter. They want competency in their life. They want to look better naked. They want to stave off injury. They want to look good, feel good, play good. And by play good, it's live a better life. Play with their kids, their grandkids, whatever. Strength is one of their many goals. They want to be stronger. They want to be more more metabolically fit, more flexible, blah, 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 blah. We could go down the list of the 10 general physical skills, cardio, respiratory, endurance, strength, stamina, flexibility, power, speed, coordination, accuracy, agility, and balance, blah, 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 blah. Or people don't walk in and say, I'd like to increase my work capacity across broad time and model domains. Of course people don't say that. People say they want to lose some body fat or they want to do this or that. But really that translates as they want fitness. So why have we become enamored with this notion of strength and Metcon? Well, I think a few reasons. Um, I, I believe it started out as, a, as a, a misunderstanding of what the top athletes were doing. I started doing CrossFit in 2009. I, I started doing CrossFit as a competitive athlete, okay? And... And I think that's something that's that's important to understand is that, and that was my goal. I just f- followed CrossFit.com, 
and from there, when I followed CrossFit.com, I was just doing the workout of the day, really just doing one workout of the day like everybody. And then I was like, all right, I want to go to the games. I need to get fitter faster. I'm willing to, I, I want more results sooner. So I'm going to do more workouts in one day, which makes sense. But it didn't happen in like a week. It happened like over across a, a period of a year. Now, my weakness was strength compared to the other athletes. So I started to lift a little more. Across a five-year span from 2009 to you know, 2013, 14, volume slowly accumulated to doing multiple workouts a day. Obviously, there was a lift portion within the day. There was a metabolic conditioning portion and maybe other things inter, inter, you know, dispersed throughout the day. So all of that was happening. And what happened was the affiliates at that time were growing and, and people were like, and this is just my opinion, by the way. I think they're like, oh, well, look, these fittest, the fittest athletes in the world are doing this. We should do this for our people because it, it, it makes sense. And it, keep in mind, I don't think any gym owner, I don't think any affiliate owner, I don't think any programmer goes out there to mess their people up. Hey, listen, I'm going to go out here and screw my people up. I'm going to over-volumize them. I'm going to make them do two workouts in one hour, effectively doubling the risk for injury. I'm going to limit my ability to coach. I'm going to limit my opportunity to teach scene correct. I'm just going to blow the whistle, and I'm going to add no value to them. I don't think anyone ever says that. I think they're like, oh, I want to get my people better. How do I do that? Well, the best athletes did this. So let me just overlay that concept to my people. The concept makes sense. The application is impossible. So that's what happened. And then over time, it just sort of proliferated. And now it's become like, oh, I mean, I'll get the questions like, how come, you know, CrossFit.com doesn't follow what CrossFit is, which is Strength and Metcon? I'm like, it breaks my heart because I'm like, it's never been that way. And keep in mind, doing multiple parts in an hour is not a bad thing either. And we're going to clarify all of this. So, so don't freak out on me. And if you freak out, it's okay. It's part of the deal. So then what has happened was we, you, know, you open up a gym and then you look down the gym that you might look up to or the gym you might have started at. And that's what the programming was. And it clearly worked you know, for you to a certain degree. So you're like, well, I'm going to do that. Remember, CrossFit implemented poorly with a poor program is effective. That's how potent the stimulus is. So don't be blinded by results without optimization, without evaluation, and understanding of what you're doing. So that's just because, oh, look, I've gotten better, so this is the, this is the best way. That's a dangerous and, and, and ignorant way to live life, so be mindful of that, right? Constant evaluation and optimi optimization is the cornerstone of what we do and why we continue to change and evolve and get better, hopefully. The reality is, if you're doing this, this two-part in a class, really what you're doing is limiting your opportunity to do what? In a 60-minute class, if you're doing a lift and a metabolic conditioning piece, you are limiting your opportunity to teach skills, to take them through a proper skill-specific warm-up, to progress them appropriately, to figure out where they're at in a progression of a barbell movement, of a gymnastic movement, wherever it might be, scale them effectively, get them primed up for the workout, and then hit that workout with a high level of intensity. And then we need to cool them down. That is, if a, you know, that is a very challenging task to do eat with a 15-minute workout, which is on average what we see with a, with a high-skill movement and, say, coupled with a low-skill movement. Okay? That's very difficult. So, for example, a workout that we had in the hand plan on last Friday was uh, 30, 20, 20, 30 repetitions of a pull-up. And then it was nine, six, six, nine push jerks at 185. So 39, 26, 26, 39. In that class, right, we have to teach the pull up, the pull up progression, scaling options for the pull up. We need to also give our, our veteran and advanced athletes some skills, whether they're doing butterfly pull ups or gymnastic kip and how to make them more efficient, all the way down to who is doing maybe a jumping pull up or a banded pull up, whichever scaling option we chose to implement that day. Then warm them up there, make sure we're appropriate, make sure they're scaled if we're cutting the reps or changing the movement due to lack of proficiency. Then we have to go through the push jerk progression. The focus was on a heavier barbell, therefore we wanted hip extension and fast hands in a receiving position. How to teach that on a low weight to no weight. Then give time for our athletes to build up to that push jerk weight, which is 185. So it takes you know our athletes some time to get there. And then we want to warm, make sure that they're primed up between both, and then hit that workout, which you know takes about 10 to 12 minutes on average. And that was the stimulus we're looking for. And then we have a cool down, right? Where I think we did some accessory work. 
that took everybody to the hour. And, and, and again, my drive some of the best coaches in the world at my gym, and I watch them struggle doing this. But they do a good job overall, but they struggle with either hitting timeline or, or adding value to every single athlete in the class. I mean, it's a beautiful struggle, and that's what we're looking for. If I dumped in a strength portion into that class, the, 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 the death knell would be to add some sort of strength portion that has nothing to do with that workout, which would be if I put in like a back squat or something like that. I, I, there's absolutely no time to do that. It, mathematically, if you pull out a lesson plan, it is impossible to do that without just blowing the whistle. It's, just, it's stupid. If you were going to do anything, what would you do, right? Well, you would do some version of a shoulder overhead, whether a press, a push press, or a push jerk. But even still, what's the point? Because it's so negated it, because we're not going to be able to teach it. We're not going to be able to warm it up. You know, what are we really trying to do with that? Like, are we just trying to get volume for the sake of volume? Or are we going to add some actual value to there? Because a true heavy lift takes time to warm up to and you got to hold your sets or ascend across. I mean, a true heavy day takes a long time. So are we just wasting our time and just add throwing volume at the wall? Or are we going to go super hard on that heavy day and add some value? And then now for the workout, we're toasted. Now, keep in mind, these are people walking in our gym that are looking for functional competence, not functional dominance. So they don't have the ability to, to you know, turn that kill switch for multiple sessions within an hour. If this were across a day, it'd be a different story. Okay? So really what happens is, is that we limit our ability to teach. We limit our ability to see and correct. Therefore, we actually don't get our people better. We don't teach new skills. We don't teach high skill things. And we keep them in this perpetual sort of purgatory state where, of course, they're going to get a little strong, stronger and they're going to get results, right? I mean, exposure will actually get things better. But you work them out twice a day, you double your wrist for injury. So if you're double, doing double sessions, you're doubling your wrist for injury. That's simple math. But I, I, most coaches, their biggest area of weakness is seeing and correcting. And I'm not... And, and, it's from what I've seen from the past decade of coaching coaches. I see, and when coaches come into the coach development program, a program near and dear to my heart, at our advanced coaching concepts course, it's it's great to see their humility when they come in because that's why they're there and they've really opened their eyes to this that and on how much room they have to grow. Most of the time, the teaching is relatively effective, but then from there, there's really no ability to actually make corrections within a within a warm up and within a workout. The seeing is not fast enough. The ability to identify a cue, identify a root cause, and then make that movement better in, in a short period of time is, is, is very challenging for most coaches, which means you need to set your classes up for success from general to specific to workout, general warm-up, specific war, warm-up and just workout. Your focus needs to be to how to make these people better. If you dump in multiple parts and pieces to a class, you now you're just blowing the whistle. So again, what is the point? Why are we doing it? I, I have, and here's, and here's how I know what I've been doing, and, and I'm by no means the only person. I know a lot of gyms that do it. I mean, we've been following simple programming, one main, you know, for the most part, one workout of the day with a warm up, a specific warm up, workout, and then some accessory or cool down, depending on the day. And my people are getting stronger. I have people getting older. They, they have been with me for almost 10 years that are getting stronger in their 40s and 50s. And there's no strength program, they're getting fitter faster and stronger. They're also increasing their skills, right? I mean, 90% of our gym can climb rope. I, I, I had a class that everyone got inverted and, and my oldest member was 67 and everyone, every other person was upside down in that class along with our 67 year old. And it's so cool because you see this stuff and you're like, okay, because we're teaching skills. This does not mean that what we're doing is amazing or, or I'm better than anyone else or our gym is, absolutely not. We just adhere to a simple principle. We teach, we refine, we see movement, we correct it. In turn, we get our people better because we, get, we give them as many neurological adaptations as they get organic, right? And that's important. We lift, absolutely, but we just have heavy days, only heavy days. On Friday, the workout coming up is a one rep max overhead squat and bench press, and gosh, it's going to be awesome, right? And today, we did L-sits, hip extensions, waiter walks, and double unders. On Monday, we did the standard from the CrossFit Games, 30, 30 clean and jerks, 30 muscle ups, 30 snatches. So we see it all, but that's what the class was. And we get our people better throughout the skills. We teach them barbell cycling. We teach them how to do singles. We, 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 we do not allow people to do kipping before they do multiple stricts. We teach that there are these levels, and, and we want to walk them through it. But we coach our butt off, and we, and we try to help them, and we give them, we give them this stuff. So 
I do think it's important to for us to understand this. And if we're programming strength in Makan, you need to ask yourself why. Why? We, you know, the hand plane we program for close to 50 affiliates. The results that we see are amazing. The programming is unbelievably simple. We do work hard to diversify it and make it fun from an affiliate perspective. But with that said, it's our lesson plans that we deliver that allow it to actually be an effective program where we teach you guys how to scale, how to warm people up appropriately, give you the tools to give your coaches, to give your members that tool. That's what I'm passionate about. And for the affiliates that do it, they see great things. Give yourself a month or so to get off of the strength and Metcon. I've worked with gyms. That, how do I go from strength and Metcon to one workout? Wean them off. Right? Maybe you go from five days to four to three to two, right? To just maybe one a day, once a week, and that's okay. A, a shorter workout, maybe it's a lower skill piece, the, the lift is the same. That's absolutely okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So that stuff is important to understand too. It's okay. But there, it needs to be programmed with purpose, and it, it shouldn't be always be strength and Metcon. It always it should be before or after workouts, and it should be once in a while. Remember, you know, these if we see a routine, that's what we want to avoid. Okay. We have a massive membership base at at, at at all the gyms that I deal with, and and the results are great. And and it takes some time. People will complain if they come from another gym, but that's okay. That's part of the deal. You can't kowtow to what all your members think they want. Remember. If, if you do that, you'll stand for nothing, and that's important to understand. Don't be an egomaniac with your programming. I program with James and Spencer um, and James, James Hobart, Spencer Hendel, and myself, and we give each other feedback all the time. My coaches at the gym give me feedback, and I try to listen to it all the time. It's not always easy to hear if someone doesn't like your programming. It's always it's nice to hear good things, but you try to implement that. Um, and you got to hear this stuff. But you got to ask yourself, why are you doing what you're doing, and are you just so tied to it because it's what you've always done? It's, it's ludicrous to me if you're doing it every day. Do the math. It's impossible to do your job. All of us as coaches need to get better at teaching, seeing, and correcting, not adding more volume into a class. We're programmed for people that want results. It's a low trajectory to a distant horizon called fitness. What is the rush? Why are we rushing to get more workouts in a shorter period of time with moving worse in theory? Because you, there's no way you can do your job in that time, which means you're blowing the whistle. Or you're working at a moderate intensity to low intensity, which yields moderate to low results, as opposed to high intensity, which yields high results. All signs point to do less better. I've never seen someone be worse off by moving better. Remember that, and that's important. Hopefully this fires you up. I wanted to keep this episode under 20 minutes because I, I know uh, that's, that's, my, that, that, that's the format we want to rock and roll with. Strength and Metcon, it's not a crime, but it is misguided if we're doing this every single day. Evaluate it. Get fired up. Get pissed off at me, but I will tell you the proof is in the pudding. I've seen it at my gyms, at many other gyms that do this. You don't need to do it, and if you're just doing it to do it, you need to evaluate, ask yourself why. What are your goals? What do your people want? And why are you really doing this sort of stuff? If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Shoot me an email. You can shoot me an email at contactaustinmaliolo at gmail.com. I throw this uh, podcast up on my YouTube channel as well so you can see my, uh, my, my ugly mug talking at the camera for 20 minutes or so. But again, I appreciate you guys listening. I get on the soapbox because I'm passionate. I get fired up. I, I love everyone that has a journey towards fitness. If you're doing something that's better than nothing, I truly believe that everyone out there that is in this world cares about their people even if it's misguided sometimes, I would be, I, as, a, as a contrarian, as someone that's questioning it, I love it, but just don't become complacent. You didn't get where you are because you were complacent. You got to where you are right now it's because you pushed the envelope and you questioned. So don't stop now. And that's my urge to you.